Hi and welcome or welcome back to Booktube with Amy. Today is going to be my recommendations video for Wayward Sun a thon, which is a read along, a week long read along hosted by me and Gem from Bookish Gems. If you do not know what it is, I will leave our announcement video linked in the description so that you can check that out for yourself. But today I thought we would just go through the bingo board and I would chat to you guys about some of the books I would recommend for some of the prompts. Now some of these will double up um, and if I remember that they'll double up I will try to say. Um, but aye, these are just some books that I really fucking love that you might also really fucking love and might want to read for the read along. So first up for Sammy which is a book that is either set in an academic setting or is based on lore or mythology. I'm going to recommend Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is a YA fantasy novel and is heavily revolving around Greek mythology but set in modern day times in New York where there is like a bit of a battle happening. I thoroughly enjoyed it, it was a five star read for me. It was absolutely fantastic. It is like your typical YA novel. It's no bringing anything new or you know like disrupting the genre um, with anything wild. It is tropey as hell but I thoroughly enjoyed it and I felt like it was a really great time. And then another one that I would recommend for Sammy is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. Again these are inspired by Greek mythology. These are a middle grade series and it'll be a quick easy fun read. This is the first in the series. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully you like it too. Then for the Dean prompt it is to have a book with a character who has gone through hell. I'm going to recommend Eleanor Oliophant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman because Eleanor has had quite the life and it's not always been easy for her. She finds a lot difficult. She finds social interaction difficult and she is just a cracking character who still just lives in my head. Um, she is absolutely brilliant. This is maybe a, a literary fiction novel. Um, it is set in Glasgow. It's by a Scottish author and it is class. If you haven't checked this out yet I would recommend for you to read it. It deals with a lot of heavy topics but it does it in a way where it is still such a fun easy read. Um, so aye, it is fantastic. I would also like to recommend Throne of Glass by Sarah G Mass. This is the first in a YA fantasy series and um, our main character has had a hell of a time. Um, she goes through a lot and you get to find out a lot of what she's been through quite quickly and um, I, it is I think impossible to read these books and no feel heart sorry for her so go check them out as well. Then Cass is a book with a character not off air. First up I'm going to recommend City of Bones by Cassandra Clare because it has actual angels um, <laughs> and so I felt like that was fitting but you also have a whole host of other characters, other supernatural beings in here as well and they're just a really fun time. Um, again, first in a YA fantasy novel, I feel like they are very quick reads, quite fast paced and thoroughly enjoyable. I haven't read these since I was in school and like I've been itching for a reread, um, but they are absolutely class so I, you might like that one. And then Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackworth. This is the first in a trilogy and I've only read the first one at this point but I thoroughly enjoyed it. This was a five star read for me. It was great. Again, actual angels in here but also demons and heroes and villains and storybook characters and damsels in distress and it was just fantastic. Um, I think that you could blitz through this quite easily. It's really enjoyable, very funny, very witty. Um, I, I loved it. Then Charlie, who's my fave, is a book with LGBTQIA plus rep. So first up I'm going to recommend The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. Um, your main character Irene is bi and badass and just has a great time. But we meet a lot of other characters in this world and like sexuality, gender just isn't that big of a deal. Uh, so I, I just think that it is handled very well. This is the first in an eight part series. <laughs> I only ever read the first in a series, I. But um, <laughs> these are absolutely fantastic books. I've spoken about them so many times on the channel, so I'm not going to go into more detail than that. But they're brilliant and they are absolutely gorgeous. 
absolutely gorgeous covers on these. They look stunning on your shelf, so check it out. And then another new favourite of mine was The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. This is a sapphic book about feminist witches, and if I need to say any more to sell you on it, then probably shouldn't you be subscribed to the channel, <laughs> because that is all it takes for me to want to pick up a book. This was phenomenal. Um, focuses on a group of sisters who all live very different lives and we get sort of through all their backstories, we get the background as to why they haven't spoken in so many years and how now they have to come together to get women the vote, to get mere rights for women and to bring magic back to the world. It was phenomenal and for it being such a chunky book I actually feel like this is quite an easy read because I binged it in two days, like I could not put this book down. And then Ghost Facers, a book with a group of friends. Ah, I'm only going to recommend one book for this and that is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stevewater. Is anybody shocked? Uh, <laughs> this is fantastic and I love our group of friends in here. Um, Blue and our boys are just some of the characters that stick in my head so much and I often wish I could just go back and experience these books again for the first time because I miss hanging out with my friends and I really do feel like reading these books you become part of your friendship group and um, you know all the wee dynamics, all the wee inside jokes and sort of for the nuances in how they talk and interact with each other. It was just amazing. Again, first in a series, um, but it is fantastic. Why um, witchy, supernaturally, check it out, it's phenomenal. And then Bobby is a book with found family or a father figure. So first up I'm going to recommend On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. I just recently read this and fell completely in love. This has so much found family rep in here. It was brilliant and it just had my wee heart absolutely soaring and I could not stop greeting at points in this book. It was phenomenal. I would highly recommend for everybody to check this one out. She's chonky, um, but it is a very quick read. You could do this in a, in a day if you sat down and you really focused on it. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. I promise you, it will make your heart happy. It was phenomenal. Then I'm also going to recommend the Suki Stackhouse novels by Charlene Harris because I feel like we get to spend a lot of time with Suki in this world and we do get to see her find her family and find her people who are like-minded um, whether it is through romance connections, whether it is through friends or just people she meets along the way. We really watch her find people who are her family and who are her people and how that helps shape her and um, help her become who she really is and find herself which I just think is a, a great thing to be a part of as well as them just being absolutely quick wee reads filled with supernatural creatures, sex, scandal, mysteries is great. And then our next prompt is Rowena so a book with witches in it, Once in Future Witches and Suki Stackhouse and the Raven Boys would also fit for this prompt but I'm going to recommend Maggie's Grave by David Sodergren. My first David Sodergren, it popped my cherry and like I've been working my way through his back catalogue ever since because this book is great. Um, this is a horror recommendation so if horror is your bag I would recommend that you pick this one up and you check it out. He is a Scottish author, he is indie published and he is fantastic at his craft so please check him out. This is witchy, it's spooky, it's grotesque it's phenomenal and a really fun time. I'm also going to recommend The OK Witch by Emma Steinkellner. This is a really cute wee middle grade graphic novel. I just love it. Um, it is such a quick read. You can get this done again like within sitting down to read for maybe half an hour to an hour. Um, it is just phenomenal and the story in here is great. The characters are brilliant and again made me a wee bit emotional actually at points. And then the next prompt is Crowley, a book with a character who is morally ambiguous. Again a bit of a different recommendation for this one but I'm going to recommend Shuggy Bean by Douglas Stewart. So this is a literary fiction novel. It won the Booker Prize winner for 2020. It is set and written in Scotland by a Scottish author. Um, it was absolutely fantastic and the character in here that is morally ambiguous is Agnes who is Shuggy's mum and um, we really get to spend a huge amount of time with her 
in the book probably more time with her than we actually get to spend with Shuggy and I feel like although you don't always agree with her decisions you have a sort of understanding as to why she is the way she is and where she is coming from and so I feel like she counts as a morally ambiguous character and I feel like she's probably the most morally ambiguous character that stands out in my head because I hate her and I really feel for her in equal measure and I think that is like the standing of a true morally ambiguous character where like you know you can't support this person they're making terrible choices but like you still have a wee soft spot for them and like you, you sort of you see where they're coming from so that would be my recommendation for that then last up is Eileen which is a book with disability rep and I am going to recommend The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones this is one that I just read not too long ago as well but I really enjoyed it and the disability rep in here is Chronic Pain one of your main characters Elia suffers with chronic pain and we sort of get to see not only his day to day struggles with that um, but sort of how it affects him mentally as well which I just thought was absolutely fantastic as well as being in a sort of a darker fantasy setting but the characters in here are phenomenal I would recommend this one as well so that is all my Wayward Athon recs. Please let me know if you take any of these away and you decide to use them for prompts. Please let me know if you're taking part in the read along, if you're excited for it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying everything that you're reading at the minute. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!